Busy Bee Joe, and I've just been flying around the garden today visiting all these flowers. Boy, look at how beautiful these flowers are. They're so pretty, and they smell so good, I just want to dive right into one. In fact, that's what I've been doing all day. You're probably wondering what all this yellow stuff is on me. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's pollen. You've probably never tasted pollen because you're not a bee. But let me tell you, if you are, it's delicious! Have you ever tasted nectar? The sweet juice that flowers produce? <laughs> let me tell you, for a bee, there's nothing that tastes better. Do you think they're giving away such delicious food for free? Or do you think they want me to do something for them in return? Do you know? Do you want to find out? Come on, let's go! So plants have a problem. Do you know what that is? They can't move. If they need something, they need to get everything that they need from right where they're rooted in the ground. You and me, we can go here, we can go there, but plants can't do that. Most of the things plants need, they can get without moving around. They can get water, soil, light, and nutrients. Plants suck up the nutrients and water through their roots. They use sunlight to make their own food in their leaves, and then they make flowers when they're ready to reproduce, so that they can make seeds and then baby plants. But that's where plants run into problems. They need to have their flowers pollinated. They need to have pollen from one flower move to another plant with the same kind of flowers. But if a plant can't move, then how does it get its pollen from one flower to another? How does it do that? Do you know? Well, let me ask you something. What if a plant that needs its pollen taken from one flower to another could ask an animal to do that instead? Bzz Animals are not rooted in the ground. In fact, animals can go wherever they like. Some animals, like me, can even fly. <laughs> so let me introduce you to some friends of mine. I'm Busy Bee Joe. This is Sunflower Yolanda. And over there is Sunflower Tom. They're beautiful. <laughs> so Sunflower Yolanda has a problem. She needs to get her pollen over to Sunflower Tom. And Sunflower Tom needs to get his pollen over to Sunflower Yolanda. But they both have roots and they can't move.
But look, there's a reporter. And reporters always investigate problems. And this reporter knows Sunflower Yolanda has a big one. I think he's interviewing Sunflower Yolanda. So excuse me, Miss Sunflower. It seems you have a problem. Can you explain to our audience what it is exactly? Well, I have this pollen and I need to get my pollen over to other sunflowers, like over to Sunflower Tom. So I was trying to get the attention of this bee over there to ask if he would visit me and take my pollen over to Sunflower Tom. But I can't seem to get that bee's attention. He's always so busy. Mm. Maybe he doesn't see my flowers. Bees love the color yellow and they love to drink nectar. If I can show him my flowers and offer him some of my nectar, then he might come over for a visit. You see, I want to put my pollen on him. Whoa, look at those yellow flowers. I can't resist. Would you like a drink of my nectar? Ooh, I love nectar. Holy pollinators, more flowers. I can't resist. Why, hello, Busy Bee. So glad to see you. Would you like some of my nectar? And have some pollen. So Mr. B, can you tell us what just happened? Well, I was flying along and then I suddenly saw this sunflower with the most beautiful yellow flowers. And I flew over there and had a delicious drink of nectar from Sunflower Yolanda. Boy, it was tasty. Mr. B, can I ask you what all that yellow stuff is on you? Well, I think it's pollen. I don't know how it got on me, but it sure is tasty. <laughs> Mr. B, tell us what happened after you got a sip of nectar. Well, suddenly I saw another sunflower plant with even better flowers. So I flew over there and got a drink of nectar, this time from Sunflower Tom. And some of my pollen from Sunflower Yolanda rubbed off on Sunflower Tom. I think that's called pollination. As you can tell, I've been a very busy bee. <laughs> so I can't wait to tell the rest of the bees in my hive so they could come over here for a visit. So can you tell us what you do with all of this pollen and all of this nectar on you? Well, the nectar gives me energy so that I can spend all day flying around pollinating flowers. I like to eat the pollen too, but I also take a lot of pollen back to my hive where I live with my bee family. Our family is huge. There are 80,000 of us. That's where we make bee bread and feed the baby bees. We do all that in our hive. That's also where we sleep at night. So Mr. B, I have a question for you. How does all of that pollen stick to you? Why doesn't it just fall off? Well, pollen has a very unusual structure. Have you ever looked at pollen under your microscopes? Do you see how spiky it is? The spikes on the pollen are how the pollen sticks to me. Now, if you take a close look at my legs, do you see all these hairs I have? Well, the spikes on the pollen stick to the hairs on my body. It's a perfect fit. So just so our audience understands, are you saying that you have special hair structures that function so that the pollen with its spikes 
sticks to you. And that's how the pollen travels from one plant to the next. Yes, that's exactly right. You humans are pretty smart. The function of my hairs is to carry pollen from one flower to another and then back to my hive. But some of it rubs off on each flower. So Miss Sunflower, let me ask you something. You're rooted in the ground here, right? Yes. So you can't move, right? No, I can't. I wish I could. So you are totally dependent on bees to move pollen from your flower to the next flower? Yes. Otherwise, it would be impossible for you to make baby plants. Yes, it would be impossible. So let me ask you something. What would happen if all the bees disappeared? How would you move your pollen from flower to flower then? Well, that would be terrible, because we would disappear. That's right. We wouldn't be able to exchange pollen anymore. We'd just sit here with our nectar, and then we get old and die. Bees are what allow us plants to share our pollen with each other. Without bees, there'd be no more baby sunflower plants, and no more sunflower seeds. So Mr. B, let me ask you something. What would happen if all of the sunflowers and all of the flowering plants you depend on suddenly disappeared? Then all of us bees would be in very big trouble. In fact, we would disappear because we need plants to survive. We need pollen and nectar to feed our young. And what about people like myself? What would happen to people if bees disappeared? Do you really want to know? Come on, let me show you. Well, if there were no bees, there would no longer be honey. Because we bees make honey. Do you like honey? I bet you do. And you would no longer have sunflowers to put in your homes because they would all disappear. In fact, many flowering plants would disappear because they depend on us. Did you know that we bees pollinate not only sunflowers, but 75% of the crops that are grown in the United States? The crops that you need for food. That means that three out of every four mouthfuls of food that you eat is because we do our job pollinating plants. Without us bees, almonds would disappear because almond trees depend on bees to pollinate them. So would tomatoes, watermelons, cucumbers, avocados, and many of your most popular fruits. Well then, let me ask you, since we are all so dependent upon bees like you, is there any danger that you might one day disappear? I'm glad you asked. Actually, us bees have been having a really hard time because you people spray so many pesticides on your crops. That kills a lot of us. Our population has dropped by over 50% in the last 80 years. And just last year in Nevada, we lost more than 60% of our beehives. Lots of my bee friends died. So what can people do to help you bees out since people need you so much? How can we stop you from disappearing? Well, if you would tell your farmers to stop spraying pesticides that are harmful to us, then we would stop getting poisoned. There are pesticides that farmers can use that aren't harmful to bees. And you could plant more flowering plants around your homes or your schools, because that's where we get our pollen and nectar from, from flowers. Yes, please stop putting pesticides on us plants because it kills our bee friends. Without bees, we couldn't make any sunflower seeds or make new sunflower plants. All of us plants love and need bees, and the bees need us. So please help the bees out. So I have some homework for you. If you plant some vegetables or flowers or even some fruit trees at your home or at your school, 
then I promise that me and my bee friends from my hive will come pollinate those flowers and make some honey for you to enjoy. I'm Busy Bee Joe, and I'm off to pollinate some more flowers. <laughs>